Yeah. Yep. You ever there? Yeah, 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 yeah. What? 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 How did I? How did I start that? That was that was absolutely terrible. People, welcome to the Browner and Lawhead Show, where the start is always probably out of control and fumbled out of the gate. I'm John Brown, and that's Jason Lawhead, and we are Brown and Lawhead right here on the Mightier 1090. You can find us on YouTube, and you can also find us in a pie in the iTunes podcast door under Kaplan and Crew. Our show will be the one with the date in front. Jason, what's going on, man? Oh, it's our weekend. It's our Friday, so we have to, you know, try to get as much crammed in to, to talk about. But, uh, you know, just kind of uh, reeling off of these ball games last night and looking forward to my Browns tomorrow with Case Keenum at quarterback and uh, seeing how that Yikes. works out. So a lot of a uh, lot to talk about, a lot to worry about. We'll, we'll, I'm, I'm sure we'll I'm sure we'll get to the Thursday night game at some point. But let's – you guys know the show. If you don't, we start the show with a little something we like to call winners and losers. And sometimes we want to declare people winners. We want to declare people losers. But we're going to start today's show with the loser, and it's this guy. You know who that is? If you can't recognize him, probably because you shouldn't. That's Washington State coach Nick Rolovich. If I'm pronouncing it wrong, guess what? I don't care because that guy's a dick. Here's why. <laughs> that man lost $3 million. He was the highest paid employee on the books for the state of Washington. Not the highest paid football coach, but the highest paid state employee in the state of Washington because he coaches at Washington State, which is the state school which is employed by the state. You get it. You, feel, you follow me. He lost his job because Washington State mandated all public officials get vaccinated. An old ball coach over here, I decided against that. I decided to not do it. And they gave him time. They gave him reasons. They gave him time. They gave him more reasons. Then at some point, the rubber met the road, and my man walked away from $3 million in the head coaching job at a Pac-12 school because he doesn't want to get the shot. I, I knew we would get to this point with some of these people. If you believe this much in your convictions, man, you going down that hill, go ahead. But I can imagine going home and telling your wife, hey, baby, we got to move. Why? Did you get fired? No, I quit. Why? You want to get that shot. All right, here's some divorce papers. Like, what? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, you know, it's like, it's one thing if you've got some, you know, hardware to hold Cache. up against these people, right? Like, you got to have, if you want to hold that firm of ground, you can't be a guy that we can't pronounce his name coaching at Washington State. And we can okay. Krzyzewski, okay? Yeah, you better be, like, even Mark Few up in, you know, Gonzaga, Gonzaga. hasn't won that one to be able to be like, hey, listen, you're going to do this and if I don't, you know. That's the only way you could even try to play that game is by showing that shiny ring, you know, um, uh, off to the to the administration but yeah i mean once you like you said once the rubber met the road here you know you, you gotta say i guess if i'm washington state even i'm going hey we're i guess we're better off without a guy who who I, we thought we hired a guy whose calling was coach at all costs coach these kids up do it for the team be a team player be a team leader and you may not like what you know, uh, this rule for the team is just like all your players don't like every single rule right. set out that you will suspend them for and or, you know, whatever. But, uh, you know, getting into these murky now, now you know, th this is where you've gotten as, as a career. I'm going to sue, you know, the, the job. That's the other part. Have right. To leave. I mean, I don't get it. If Because if, what I failed to mention is why this even became a bigger story is because now he's going to sue for the remaining amount of his contract. And in his lawsuit, he's citing that the, the athletic director has it out for him more or less. Okay. Yeah. The athletic director created coronavirus in a lab in China, set it loose created, on the world. Right. Oh yeah. Ha went into cahoots with the, the world health organization, the CDC, the governor of Washington, the, the both president. presidents, both presidents. I mean, this is where some of these people, that's how crackpotted they are. That's how 
so it's all about me they are they really come to the point where it's the ad that's got it out for me that's why there's a government state mandate and they got it it's like you you can't create these kinds of delusions you know and it's it's insane and that is insane this is the part where the head coach thinks he's bigger than the school and that head coach doesn't realize who he is and where he's at on the hierarchy of head coaching, just alone in a Pac-12, my man. I don't know what you woke up thinking that morning, but you clearly woke up thinking dangerous, bro. And you you walked on the wrong side of the dynamite because now you unemployed. Like I, I just don't understand how you can then, under a state mandate, because they fired you for just cause because the coronavirus pandemic is a it's it's a it's a uh, 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 health and, and health and safety emergency, so they can fire you for a cause in your contract because you are a public and health safety issue. Okay, you do not do you not understand that? So they don't have to pay you. So your frivolous lawsuit to then turn around and blame the AD just shows me how stupid you are, and it just shows me that I hope that AD didn't hire you. Because if that guy hired you and then turned around and had to fire you for something that's stupid, they should fire him too. Because clearly these people don't know what they're doing. You fired a guy who will tell his players to follow the rules, follow the rules, follow the rules. Please preach his discipline all day as a football coach because that's what you have to do because football is a violent game played by people who skirt the rules or attempt to or they, they play a little bit over the line. So you preach discipline all day long until it comes to you. Till you didn't got to get in line with the state. Oh, old ball coach can get in line with the state, but y'all better get in line with me. Y'all better put them chin straps on. Y'all better run these plays. Y'all better do. Y'all better be in the. Y'all better be in your beds at this particular time at night. Y'all better go to class. But me, old ball coach. No, I ain't finna. I ain't finna get no shot. Mm-mm, mm-mm. No, 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 no. They trying to track and me I'm with that shot. Do when I defy it, and I'm gonna sue when I right. defy it. And then when I don't get what I, I want, I'm gonna show my. I'm gonna show my players what it's really like to be a man instead, instead of just being like, you know what this decision that I made and I have to live with that decision. Nah, you're going to sue. You're going to sue. Yeah. Team bus leaves at five 30 guys. Imagine this team bus leaves at five 30 guys. You want to ride on this road trip? We're out of here at five 30 foot. You know, player comes up at five 40 bus is already gone. Player wants to sue the coach now for leaving at five 40 because he was there at five 40, but he had to, ch- you know, I, at the end of the day, if the, AD really had it out for you, then I think you would be a smart enough person to be do- documenting these things as they go along, right? Like if anybody had it out for you and you felt that way, if you felt like there is going to be an unlawfully or, you know, firing or at any job or whatever, you would start saying, hey, this time at this day, this was said to me. I'm documenting this. I'm writing it down. I had a witness named John over here. Right. These two things transpired. This email here that it is addressed this way, certain things. And what's funny is, had he got the shot, kept on coaching, been documenting these things that he supposedly says ha- the AD has out for him, if there ever did come a time where he got fired, then he actually might have a lawsuit to be like, hey, look, man, I got the shot when they mandated it. Yep. These are the things I've kept under. You know, I've been doing these things. I, I I said what I, you know, I did what I said I'd do in that interview. I got these types of recruit. And then he might be able to sit there and go, I've got all this documented. The AD had it out for me. But now it's a state mandated employee because guess what? Maybe the guy that uh, cleans up the, the men's locker room at the stadium didn't want to get the vaccine either, and he's looking for a job. You think he's got, you know, the lawyer? You think he's going to go sue? And they're even going to listen to that? Or they're even going to listen to his objections at a podium or a microphone? Give me a break, man. They put this exact same mandate on all state troopers and police officers, and they all said in mass that over 40% of them said that they would quit. 1% did. One, one percent quit. So this idea that there's, oh, we're gonna do this, we're gonna. I mean, I listen. I give him credit for sticking to his convictions, but you're also stupid because you lost three million dollars. Good luck making that money up somewhere else, doing whatever it is you do, whatever your name is. Oh, oh, Nick. Good luck, Nick Rolovich. I promise you, that's the last time I'm gonna say this name unless he goes on a killing spree. 
Next. He might be. No, I mean, I mean, AD, if I were you, I'll look out. Washington State, yeah. Last night, something great happened. The NBA came back. And we were treated to two very good games, the Milwaukee Bucks and the Brooklyn Nets in the first game. And in the second game, the Lakers played the Warriors. We'll get we'll, we'll hosh posh this and kind of go back and forth on, on what we thought of the games. But I want to start with the Warriors Lakers games because obviously we're on the West Coast and, and that game means more here than the other game did. Which was a great game though. But the Lakers, and I'm interested to hear what Jason thinks about this. The Lakers played the game. I thought that they would. LeBron was great. A D was great. I was expecting that from Westbrook. I didn't expect Melo to pump fake a free throw. Funny, didn't expect it. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I expected that from them. This is what I think they're going to look like. If you play against a team that you can't defend the perimeter against and that passes like the Golden State Warriors, the Lakers are going to get beat. But here's the best part for that. Only one team does that. The, the Warriors. The Spurs used to do it. They don't have the manpower anymore to make it effectively. Only the Warriors do that. So people freaking out about the Lakers losing last night, as, as bad as it looked from a defensive aspect, the Lakers are going in a lot of games if AD gets 30, LeBron gets 30, and I don't give a damn what else happens. Well, you know, that's where I disagree with you. And I know it's the first game of the season, and this could be the type of game that we, we don't see from them again. I don't know. But what I looked at and what I saw is, is you know, a, 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 you, there are more teams now, and I think that it's trended this way. There are more teams now that are, you know, roster built with depth. And I looked at that game last night, and I thought bringing in Westbrook might be able to alleviate LeBron's minutes. But then I look around that roster, and I look around and I say, LeBron may have to play more minutes. Um, for this team to be really effective against teams that are deep, mm -hmm. against teams that can score off the bench. I mean, the Warriors had more guys off the bench in double figures than the whole Laker team. The and Lakers were, had two guys in double figures. And last the Warriors time. were missing three guys. And the Warriors are missing Clay Thompson and James Wiseman. So the, what I was really, what was eye-opening to me was, first off, they they have the the Lakers have the ability to make individual athletic plays in help defense because they've got guys like LeBron, they've got guys like AD, they've got guys like Westbrook who can come out and make a individual help athletic eye opening highlight play yes. on defense. But they do not play good team help defense on the floor. They have to hope that somebody flies out of nowhere to block a shot or get some. And over a course of a game, that is going to be a big problem for them. They gave up a lot of points to a Warrior team that had their best offensive player have a real shaky night, at least from the floor. I mean, Steph played a great floor game. Don't get me wrong. His first triple-double in almost over five years. Mm -hmm. um, and he did the things as a point a point guard supposed to do to have his team in the best chance to win. I just thought the Lakers, there's a little boy, their depth. They don't get a lot of point. They don't. Here's another thing. They don't shoot free throws. Great. I mean, they've got a roster of mediocre to bad free throw shooters. They got worked in points in the paint last night, 46 to 32 at points in the paint. If you're not going to make free throws Ugh. while you're getting outscored at points in the paint, <laughs> while taking more threes and you know what else so I, I you, you look at that team and you go you know what and that's another reason LeBron may not be able to come off the floor like they thought he was he's their best three-point shooter on the team I mean I he's the best three-point shooter on that team that's saying something but that's saying something bad this right is one of the I mean, things he's improved of course but that's not who you want to be your best three-point shooter one of the things I thought we would see more of it's Anthony Davis on the low post. Anthony Davis was two for seven last night from three. I get that big guys want to shoot threes now. The Warriors have zero size. Zero. And Draymond Green has a snowball chance in hell at guarding Anthony Davis. And he bailed him out all night shooting jump shots. Now, when he got Toscano Anderson on him, he punished him. But you need to be able to punish Kevin Looney, who 
I don't know why the Warriors love this kid, but they love Kevon Looney, Kevin, whatever his name is. They love that kid. More power to him. But I thought that what the Lakers' biggest issue was last night was perimeter defense. Once they chased the guy off the shot, that's where it, that's where it stopped. Their defense wasn't on a chain, and that's Frank Vogel's calling card. And we talked about this yesterday, and I said this yesterday, and I'm going to repeat it again today. The Lakers will let uh, – Frank Vogel will let these guys do whatever they want on offense. He's got the defense. And if they go out there and get ran off like that, which, I, by the way, I don't see changing because you play Rondo and Westbrook at the same time, terrible defenders. You didn't also put Carmelo Anthony out there with them, terrible defender. And Dwight Howard, who's now basically a foul magnet. <laughs> like I, yeah, I was watching this going. LeBron and AD are killing. I like what I'm seeing. Westbrook will figure it out. He'll he'll get the wheels on him about how to uh, assimilate with this team. There's nothing else. Know. There's nothing well, else. Westbrook's going to have to do more than assimilate. I think. I think he's really going to have to even exceed expectations. And what I see with Westbrook is he's an old 32, about to be 33 in a couple of weeks. He's an old one. You he's know, 32 why? going on 36. Yeah, you know why? Because I'll tell you what. I think I, I looked it up. He 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 has averaged about 34 and change minutes per game for his career. But the last four seasons coming into this one are the most minutes every year he increasingly the most minutes he's ever played. That's supposed to be the opposite. LeBron mm -hmm. played basically his first five years. He basically played 40 minutes and change a game, and then he hasn't had a 40 minute season since 08. Everything's gone down, and and he's gotten to his days at the Lakers right now. I think he's averaged 38 minutes a, a game for his career because he was so heavy in the early part. But as a Laker, he's only averaging about 34 and and, and change. Um, and and people freak out about that. The, Westbrook has played the most minutes he's ever played seasonally in the last four years going into this year. So he's an old 33. And, you know, AD, going back to that, and I get, you know, even with Draymond and the height difference, AD does not want to get pounded down there. No. And when he feels like there's a matchup that's going to work him over physically in the block, even though he could go down there, he could live at the free throw line, he could he could get he can get some ammo, but he's going to take some punishment. He steps out, and and the, if they don't if they don't kind of be able to adjust and, and use him as an attack guy in the in the paint on a nightly basis, and I don't know where Westbrook succeeds and fits in because teams are going to let him throw bricks up from deep all, all night in. long all night long all right. night on the other right. side of that coin the nets played the bucks last night i mm -hmm. thought we saw a nets team that is still trying to figure it out much like the lakers by the way having avery bradley on the court with four minutes left in a critical game literally blew my mind because he was on the team yesterday but yeah what the Nets did, what the Nets looked like to me was a team that had dealt with whether Kyrie Irving was going to come or not. And now that they decided he's not coming, hey, Patty Mills, you got to play a lot. Hey, uh, James Harden, you're back at point guard. And now they're shuffling around trying to find their position. The Bucks look like the same team that won the championship last year. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thought they looked solid. They played hard yeah. as hell. And their best player might be top three in the league, maybe the best player in the league. He might be the best player in the league at this point because nobody can guard this dude and he can't even shoot. So I thought the Bucks looked very bucky and I thought the Nets looked a little lost. Yeah, I was really impressed with the Bucks um, because I thought maybe just it would be a kind of a deflation game of all the celebration. They've got the first Ugly championship. Ass rings. Yeah, since uh, Al Cinder and, uh, you know, I thought Nets would come in with a little bit more of a chip and a reason to, to, to play. But the Bucks were very impressive as a team. And that was a really kind of, I think, a statement game to the rest of the league to be like, look, we are going to be a bigger problem than we were last year. And, you know, I look at that Nets roster now. The more I look at that Nets roster and, you know, the Nets shot 53 percent from three and got run off the court. I mean, they did the things right. Patty Mills, seven for seven, Harden, 50 mm -hmm. percent, Durant, basically 50 percent. But when I look around and I kind of go, wow, 
you know, with 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 a lot of the movement of the East be, being a you know a, kind of a younger, uh, aggressive teams with teams like the Hawks and the Bulls and these teams that are going to come after you and pour it on you and and make you work for for the entire game. You know, Blake Griffin's and Millsaps. Uh, you know, we'll see how Lamarcus comes back. I'm not going to grade Lamarcus until he's had at least a he month or so to get back. Night. Terrible. But you know, I'm not going to. Yeah, he guys coming off of a not playing basketball in this league for a long time. So, but when I still look around at that roster, you know, you sit there and blank grip and you go, uh, Harris, yeah, he'll spot it. But boy, I, I kind of feel like, I kind of feel like Durant is going to have to have his best season of his career if he's going to get this team through the East with the way the Bucks look and the rest of that roster. On the second half of this podcast, we're going to find out what the hell's wrong with the strike zone. Brown and Lawhead, we'll be right back. We back like we never left. I mean, the commercials here are very long, so it probably felt like we were gone. But we're back. Browner, Lawhead, Mightier 1090. Again, if you missed anything on the first half of the podcast, you can head over to YouTube or you can already subscribe, like, and share in the iTunes podcast or anywhere where you get your podcast from under Kaplan and Crew. Jason and I are the show with the number, and then the name. We talked about in the first half of this podcast, the NBA coming back. How stupid can you be to give away $3 million? But in Washington State, they found the guy. Now we're going to talk about something that I, I, listen, this is probably a hill I'm going to die on, and I'm okay with this. Jason, do you have a hill that you're going to die on regardless of what another person says? Well, that's a good question. I didn't expect that one. Um, yeah, I'm always gonna die on the Jabbar's the greatest of all time hill. That's uh, a he good hill, though. I go. You got a lot of ammo on top of that hill. Yeah. Okay. That's true. I do. I do. Um, no, I don't want to waste the time. I. I. You know what? I, let me get back to you. Okay. <laughs> One day okay. on that hill. Because, because I want to hear your hill, and we don't have enough time to have me think about my hill. Here's the hill. Here's okay. the winner, okay? Today's winner <laughs> is this little image that you're seeing. What the hell is that you may be asking if you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening? I'm putting up the balls and strikes from last night's Red Sox-Astros game. The problem with this is there were 21, repeat that, 21 missed strikes last night, according to ESPN Stats and Information. And I know you're saying, well, that's one person's view. No, fool. This is a robot technology that that square on your screen that every screen has, every network uses it. And they probably, baseball should have never let them put this on the screen. Because what this does is immediately shows you how bad the umpire is, how subjective strikes are. And to me, last night, the winner in that game is robot umpires. Because that's the hill I'm going to die on. We've got too much technology to not get the error out of the game. I don't care how authentic it makes it feel. I put that up behind the plate for when someone slides home. If you're trying to save jobs for umpires, put two umpires in left and right field like you do during the playoffs. I don't care. But what you have to do, you have to fix this. You absolutely 100% have to fix this because now this is the second time a umpire has messed up a game for a team. The first time it was a check swing in the in the uh, the Giants Dodgers game, and now you have a repeated mistake. See, that's one mistake. That's a check swing that can happen to any referee. Okay, football calls happen bad all the time. Basketball calls happen bad all the time. When someone is repeatedly making errors right. right that is hurting the game that's hurting the integrity of the sport and so i think it's time for robot umpires i'm glad last night happened even though unfortunately it was for the red sox who then ended up giving up seven runs after one after a, a one two count that was clearly a strike and should have gotten them out of the inning the inning continued the astros scored seven runs jason are you ready for robot umpires 
Yeah, I mean, after seeing last night, and not just that one at the home plate, some instances, and like you make a good point, right? The check swing down to first, I think that should be challengeable at least yes. because that happens on, you know, that's not pitch after pitch after pitch. You can't challenge balls and strikes every time when there's 19 or 21, whatever you said, around the, the zone that were called balls that were in the zone. So robotic umpire to call the balls and strikes, it, it, it'll, it'll be more effective. You know what? The, the player doesn't have that guy to argue with. Right. Okay. Nor does the, the manager. The manager doesn't have that guy to argue with. And if there's the check swing from third or first base and you don't like it, something like that, that should be challengeable. Um, in, in the rules, the manager should be able to go, hey, look, let's look at that again, please. Yes. And when you look at that again and you have all the different angles, you can go, he didn't go around ball four or whatever ball it was. And last night there should have been a punch out. Now. Who knows what the parameters of the game are now that we have nine innings every pitch that's the robot because a, a strikeout that didn't happen in the third could have led to a two-run homer for the other team that they wouldn't have got those two runs or whatever, you know. By, by. But at the end of the day, yes, the Astros did go on to score seven, and it wasn't the, the strikeout that was going to win Boston the game. They, they, they still had yes, to go down to the bottom of the ninth and still get some runs or, or go to extra innings. But, yeah, and maybe that is the hill I'll die on now that, you know, you really put that graphic up because I had heard that in my ear about the 21 Miss you know, strikes. Heard, you know, the 21 strike. And then when you see that and you see how bad so many of those green dots are right in the strike zone, you're like, that's way too many. That's what If that's 21 now, what is it on a daily basis? Thank and, you. And, and in other ballparks and what's the average here and if you, so and if you are thinking that i am trying to alter baseball here's here's what i will tell you these hitters are fantastic these pitchers are fantastic if you give them a specific zone to throw the ball in they'll work on it pitching will mm -hmm. be better and hitting will be better because you know the zones to hit in your eyesight these players can train their eyesight in the fraction of a second to tell you if a ball is a centimeter on or off. You will get better at bats, and you will get better pitching. The idea that the pitcher is looking like, well, what more do I got to do? That hurts the game. It alters sure. the way pitchers take the mound. It alters how aggressive they are, and it absolutely hurts batters because they don't know where the strike zone is. Exactly. And I, and I think it still hurts pitchers more if you're going to, you know, call strikes balls. It hurts batters more if you're going to call balls strikes, yes. right? But a, a hitter, even in a hitter, is innately able to adjust to where an umpire strike zone is, yes. right? Like they over, they can, they can innately go, this guy has a low strike zone and I'm going to be aggressive on the sinker early or whatever if I see that road. And I'm not going to wait and take these pitches because he'll give call me strikes. Whereas the pitcher sits there and goes, I'm not going to be able to get the the middle. Of, I'm not going to be able to get the, the, the corner of the plate that is a strike. And this guy's going to call it balls two out of three times. I'm going to be – I don't know what pitch to go to. Right. I don't know what pitch in this count at 2-1 – my out pitch is no longer my out pitch. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think the robotic umpire, we've, we've come far enough, and you're like, you're right. I mean, when it comes to bang, bang plays, have an home plate umpire there to make sure a ball didn't get fouled off of a foot or, right. or get you know hit by a pitch and, and call safer out or be there to, to help the first base umpire on a, on a suicide squeeze or, or, you know, whatever it is, um, you know. And have that extra outfielder or outfielder on. Uh, get it right. Get it right and get it consistent. And you're right. You're going to have a better batter pitcher experience. And, you know, less guys are going to get tossed out of dugouts for the way balls and strikes are being called. Get it right. At the end of the day, as a fan, I don't want to talk about the umps. I don't want to talk about the referees. Get it right. What? You know what? What people have gotten right that you didn't see coming are NFL teams. Jason and I have been talking about this all week. Surprise teams. We're going to get to our surprise teams because I there's a couple of teams on my list. And let me back up a second, even, even more. 
when I went and looked at the list of, okay, I, this is what I think this team was going to do. I'm surprised by this. I'm surprised. I didn't have as many surprises as I thought I did. On the surface, I thought I was going to have a lot more surprises and I was going to be, oh, man, I, I can't pick and choose. There was not a lot of surprises, man. And so I'm Ooh. interested to hear. We'll, we'll go one at a okay. time. You'll go one, I'll go one. Right. And so we can try to figure out if we even have the same surprises. So right. I'm going to start with my first surprise, the New Orleans Saints. Hmm. At three like and two, surprise. I losing Drew Brees, uh, losing their best wide receiver, whose name escapes me at this very second. Not knowing who your quarterback is because Jameis Winston has had to uh, basically share snaps with Taysom Hill. The energy of what happened with another hurricane, I just didn't simply see them after five games being three and two. I just didn't. I thought that was too much. I like Jameis, but I don't love Jameis. I hate Taysom right. Hill as a quarterback. I hate him as a gadget player. I really don't get the whole gadget thing that they're doing with him anyway, but I also love Sean Payton. So I thought with a combination of, of the hurricane and the lack of consistency of snaps and in, in the preseason from Jameis that they would struggle three and two is pretty good. It is pretty good. And it's a good spot to be in, in that division because with McCaffrey out, mm -hmm. uh, that again, you know that was uh, that that team was trending to be a really big surprise. And then Atlanta still, sucks. You know, Panthers got off to a good start, but without McCaffrey, in all sorts of formations and sets, and the ability for him to run it and 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 and, and trick play it and and catch the ball, you know, it, it keeps them down. And and I like that. Yeah, the Saints are they weren't on my list, which is interesting, mm. but I do like them. I'm gonna go my kind of my top surprise right now is the Bengals. And um, the Bengals, to me, when you look at the Bengals, I mean, yeah, Mason Crosby missed some game, some some field goals that the Packers could say we should have won up here. But you know, the Bengals are sitting here going, "Man, we're we're six points away from being undefeated," and a uh, three point loss in overtime to the to the Packers, a three point loss in just a bad performance against a good defense to the Bears, who are also on my list um, as a team that just when they lay down the defense and they don't turn the ball over, they're going to be everywhere and they're going to be able to, to win any game that, that they're in. So the Bengals are sitting here going, hey, we're we're uh, we're four and two. We're in second place and per, you know, perennial, perennially the you know, one of the toughest, if not the toughest division of football year in and year out. And they're sitting real pretty in the way Burroughs playing football right now. And you know, even with Mixon's having some rough games, he's had some great games. And they, mm -hmm. they stick. I like that the Bengals stick to the run, even when Mixon is getting bounced around for a couple of yards of carry. And then they still play call themselves into good situations. So um, the Bengals, my top surprise. I have the Bengals on my list, too. And that's going to be my next team. The Bengals are on my list as well. And I, and I tell you, because I watched that Chicago Bears game, the Bengals ran out of time in that game because Joe Burrow absolutely stunk in the third quarter. He threw three straight interceptions on three straight passes. Even with that happening, him and Jamar Chase started cooking and, and late in the fourth quarter. And I don't know if it was a two-minute thing or you know how these NFL games go when somebody's up two scores, the defense just kind of goes full prevent, and then the other team kind of gets hot. And this wasn't that. This wasn't that at all. And they just ran out of time. They would be five and one. But and what they did against Green Bay, I, th I thought Green Bay had them beat. I thought they kind of beat themselves against Green Bay. So, I, but I, I, I like everything that I've seen from him. I'm not a big Joe Burrow fan. I really feel like he's very, very overrated. Hmm. But I've got well, you're, it. You're, that's the hill you're dying on, actually. <laughs> Well, I, listen, I'm taking a lot of wounds right now. I'm, I'm taking a lot of sniper shots because he is playing above board right now. He's really he's really kept his composure on a, with a bad offensive line. I thought them taking Jamar Chase would do him a disservice, but giving him a weapon as opposed to giving him protection has been better for him. And I think the Cincinnati Bengals have really been able to take off with what he's been able to do. And so I'm shocked. I am shocked. In that division, of all things, too, by the way, which they haven't played a lot of division games, but to be four and two 
right now for the Bengals, I think everyone in that – because they've got a super young coach too that no one talks about. Yeah. That yeah. Being 4-2 and two in that building right now, they are the only ones who believe that they could be 4-2 and two after week six. Sure. And they're the only team – that, and you're right, that it's early on in the season, so divisional play just ramps up. So they're the only team in that division – with a win, they they beat Pittsburgh head to head. So the the only two teams in that division that have played a division game is that one game. And what I think Burrow's greatest gift of just to just to finalize the Bengals here, I think you even said it and you pointed it out in the in the Bears game, and it even likens to the Green Bay game. His greatest gift is short memory. Mm-hmm. You know the three straight interceptions, the interception he threw right before. I think second Crosby missed that could have won the game. He threw one and then he got his team right back down the field and got him into the position to win that game again that his field goal kicker missed. His greatest gift is short memory, not fr- not getting frustrated with knowing that he doesn't have the greatest offensive line and staying in the game throughout for his team really shows, I think, you know, his bigger maturity of where he is only 16 games in base. He's only 16 games in. He... So I'm glad we agreed on that. Cause I thought that I, I was wondering where you were going to sit on the Bengals. Um, give me another one. Cause I gave you the Bengals and I gave you the saints. You had to say you, the Bengals were your first one. Give me another one. You know, I'm going to actually say I've obviously the Cowboys, um, the Cowboys for me at five and one. And even though that's in that division that they're in, I, I really am impressed um with as as well as they've played coming out collectively as a team you knew Dak was coming back you were you you know if you're a Dallas fan you're hoping you're going to get the Dak of old I think he's even adjusted a little bit to his game to um you know stay in that pocket presence and 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 uh you know they've been able to use the running game um and McCarthy feels – it looks like he feels really comfortable. So the Cowboys, who I'm always like, you got to sell me more, a little bit more, they, they're starting to sell me. And I think, uh, you know, they haven't beat a lot of teams yet, but as the season goes on in that division, they won't have to beat a lot of good teams because there's none in their division. I, I'm i not a fan of the Cowboys, so I'm not gonna, I'm not going to dive into that pool. Okay. I'm just going to give you my next team. Okay. I'm talking about the Raiders. I really am. I thought I thought the Raiders absolutely dodged a bullet in winning that game against the Ravens in the season opener. I thought Pittsburgh was overrated. We saw that to be true. Their last win against Denver, okay. But having what is going on in that locker room, what having what's going on in the organization, for them to be where they are going forward, tied for first place. With so many ne- with so much negativity swirling around that room, I think we've got to look at this from a standpoint of if you thought the three and zero start gave them some type of 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 momentum, what happened with John Gruden was a an atomic bomb. Mm, yeah, and it should have blown them completely out of the water, and Denver should have rolled them because the Bears beat them. The day I, this came out on a uh, Thursday or Friday, if I'm not mistaken, with what happened with Gruden, he played, he coached on Sunday, then mm-hmm. everything else came out on Monday. So it was already in their locker room when they played the Bears, and in less than a week they shook it off. They shook it off and went out and beat the Broncos. Yeah, the Broncos are bad, but they're still an NFL team. They're still collecting checks. So for the Raiders to be four and two, I'm shocked. Yeah. No, they were on my list as well. I, the way they beat the Broncos, too, coming out of that kind of uh, – it wasn't like some fell into a win, which a lot of teams sometimes just do in the NFL, not right. playing very well because the NFL is so screwy. Um, but that was a type of team that, like we talked, I think, on Monday's show about how I was really just impressed with what's in that locker room based on the fact that they uh, – you know, short memory that the NFL kind of helped by just sweeping all of it. Just John's gone. Story's over. He was the only one, you know? um, So that was, I think that was a bit of a a gift for them, but yeah, to be four and two where they're at John Gruden or no John Gruden. If you would have said, Hey, the bank, the the Raiders are going to be four and two out of the first six. I think everybody would be surprised. 
Last but not least, the Chargers. For me, last. I know you've got another one. The Chargers. I'm shocked that the Chargers are four and two. After watching them get beat, because sometimes you you get a loss and people go, oh, see, I told you they're not that good. I think the loss that they took to the Ravens kind of showed me it's a miracle that they're four and two. Because if you're asking yourself the question, yes, Justin Herbert is awesome. But they beat the Chiefs in Kansas City because Patrick Mahomes and that team, they just, they're just not right right now. They've been able to get wins against teams who are in the same position as Kansas City. They're just not right right now. And so timing is everything on the schedule. And I'm happy the Chargers are at that where they're at, but I'm also shocked. Yeah, I'll, I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna take the cross towners. I, you know, uh, I'm very surprised at the Chargers as well for what they how they've been able to win those two big games, Cleveland and KC, before the loss. But I'm gonna say Rams, and I'm gonna say Rams based on the fact that uh, I, I'm as I'm impressed with how well they got into the Stafford era so quickly and so effectively, and they were able to win some early games figuring it out. They were able to beat the Super Bowl champions uh, de de decisively. And even after a tough loss to Arizona, who we're seeing is obviously the most prepared team to come into the season because they're not right. just beating good teams, they're beating them up. And so to be beat up by the Cardinals is just the status quo. Uh, and then to come right back and then to have uh, games, big games after that, um, big wins and, and be able to even, you know, get better from that Cardinal game, not have that Cardinal game be kind of a, a hiccup. Ramps. All right. Ten seconds. You performing anywhere this weekend? T tonight, uh, tonight in about an hour and a half, two hours. No. Yeah, 7.30 if you're hearing this. And after the show, Little Italy, Paleo Wine Company, a uh, comedy show. Come on out. It's tonight. After that, I'll tell you more next week. Bye.